Josh Allen is better than Lamar Jackson and is playing at a level unlike any other quarterback in the NFL at the moment. Stevie Johnson, tell me I'm wrong. Hey, look, you you make a valid point there, and I can't I can't say anything otherwise, you know, other than the two MVP trophies that Lamar has on on Josh. But when it comes down to throwing power, when it comes down to a uh, ball control, when it comes down to team control, um, I'm going to choose Josh every time. When it comes down to running, I'm still going to choose Josh. You know, even though they are both um, elite players throwing and passing, and I do like the style of Lamar Jackson, but if I had to choose a player to, you know, lead my team, I'm going to go with 17 from Wyoming. I agree. And off of that, he's bigger. I think he's more accurate. Who... What quarterback do you want in the playoffs when it matters the most? I th- the stats. The stats say Josh Allen. I think that that's exactly what I was going to say. If we're comparing the two guys, great question, Aaron. First of all, to start this <laughs> off, great question. This is my first rodeo, <laughs> sir. If we're if we're comparing the two guys, both playoff success is the major difference. Obviously, yeah, Lamar two MVPs, but like just look at what Allen's playoffs num- playoff numbers are. Whereas Lamar has like a losing record. But I think let's look at just this year. Allen is doing stuff, his, his what is it, his EPA per dropback, the highest we've seen in almost 10 years. He is playing at a level, especially when offense is down league-wide, he's playing at the highest level. It's been unbelievable to watch what this Buffalo Bills offense has done. I think what's almost the most impressive aspect is it of it is that they've taken the throttle off in the second half of the last two games. Imagine they were just pumping Miami in the second half and just pumping Jacksonville. They could have had... 55, 60 points against the Jags easily, and perhaps the same would apply to the Miami Dolphins. So while the stats are showing all these incredible things for Josh Allen, I almost wonder, what if those games were closer? What if Allen needed to throw a little bit more in the second half of those games? The disparity between he and everybody else in the NFL through three weeks would be that much bigger. And to Kean, I would probably richer because he would have gotten any time <laughs> if they would have kept yes. him in the game. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Welcome into Broken Table. I'm Aaron Karolnik, Takia Singh, Chris Hine, and Stevie Johnson joining us live from the airport. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm uh, I'm not at the house now. I'm uh, on my way, actually, to Buffalo to host the Bills 50-yard finish and enjoy time with the Bills Mafia. Uh, so it's a, it's a good time, but I'm, I'm definitely glad that I'm able to still make it happen here with Broken Table. And we're happy, too, because we love Stevie Johnson and his commentary on the NFL and all things Buffalo Bills. And, and back to the question we posed, Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson. Of course, that centers on Sunday night. The game of the week, in my opinion. Early candidate for game of the season, I, I, I tend to agree. A huge game for Baltimore, no doubt. It was a one and two team. But I think also, Chris, a huge game for Buffalo in that they could really, really reassert them or reassert themselves as the dominant forces in the AFC. It's, honestly, you know what worries me about this game? And Baltimore are small favorites, but Buffalo doesn't really need this game. And Baltimore... Letdown spot. It, mm. it's, I, it, I don't necessarily think it's a letdown spot, but it's like... Baltimore has much more urgency to win this game coming in at one and two, although coming off a big one of the Cowboys. But I just feel like it's I, I'm more scared of this game from a Bills perspective than any of the other ones before. Scared? Why are you scared? Just because it, Baltimore's still a good team. You're in Baltimore. It's Sunday night. I know we have the quarterback advantage. Sorry, I'm not I'm not Stevie. I know the Bills have the quarterback <laughs> advantage. Yes. <laughs> but I just think Baltimore really needs this game, whereas Buffalo is comfy at 3-0. and It has been so impressive to watch the Bills so far this year on both the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball. We talked about Allen and Lamar, the comparisons between the two going toe-to-toe, but think about the defensive side of the ball, the way the Bills have been able to play without three key starters for the vast majority of the season. And they've been great. Great! Like, they dominated Jacksonville. They dominated Tua and... Aside from the first half against Arizona, they took it to Kyler and the Cards. Those are three quality offensive teams. I have been just as impressed with the Bills defensively as I have been with them offensively. That's saying a lot to you because offensively, they've been as good as anybody. I mean, on the other side of of that is Baltimore's pass defense has not been good at all. Like, of what is it, 1,025 total yards 875 of them have been have been passing yards. Yeah. Like, their pass defense is not good. Gardner Minshew shredded them. <laughs> so yeah. bad. He ripped them up. Like, he destroyed them. To Aaron's point about the Bills' D, it's the to me, it's the pass rush. The pass rush has been unbelievable. And when you have a good pass rush, that allows you a little bit of time to be without a core guy like Terrell Bernard, like Matt Milano, like Taron Johnson. 
Yeah, and it's the guys stepping into those voids, as we've talked about in past weeks, that have really thrived in spite of being put in adverse circumstances. And I see no reason why this is a defense, as good as they've been so far through three weeks, that doesn't get better and better as the season goes on. More experience for those young players. And then, inevitably, you get Johnson, you get Bernard, and then you get Matt Milano back later in November. Woo! You're cooking with gas when you combine that with an offense that has thrived so far through three weeks. AK, I agree with that. I agree 100%. This this defense is dynamic, um, and they don't have all-name players. That's the best thing about it. You have guys that some people don't even know around the world, but they're flying around like they're veterans. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that, AK. I'm going to agree with you. Who's more important for this team to get back? Is it Taron Johnson or is it Matt Milano? Chris, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Matt Milano. You know, uh, our DBs have shown to be able to step in and step up. Uh, and that goes for any any one of them, any one of the six to eight players that's in that room. Uh, when it comes to having that lead, that leadership, um, proven leadership, I feel like Matt Milano is going to bring that and is going to take the defense to a whole nother level. Not to bring anything away from Taron Johnson. He's a great, great DB. But um, it has it's been seen that or it's been proven that our DBs are ready for anything. I think it helps, too, when someone like Cam Lewis has played so well and not to say the linebackers haven't played well, but like the secondary has been unbelievable. And I think that's that probably plays into why, yeah, getting Milano back come like December, that this guy was an all pro. That's going to be huge for this defense. Yeah, look what Christian Benford's done all year. I mean, locked up Gabe Davis. Everyone's talking, oh, Gabe Davis revenge game. He's going to come in here and torch the Bills. That was not even close to happening. Did an amazing job against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. The Bills secondary, I mean, you just have to give them their flowers because they definitely deserve it. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about this quote from Josh Allen following Monday Night Football. What a, this was spicy. Yes. This was, this was, get, hold on, all the, the Twitter detectives get out yeah. in full force to like really break this one down. And Josh did walk this back a little bit later in the week, but here's his quote on the receivers on his, on his team. It's a fun and wonderful thing when you got a bunch of guys that don't care about stats. Hmm, Takia, who could he have been referring to? Was Maybe it was a, a dig? dig, a dig at Diggs, perhaps. <laughs> and again, Josh says it wasn't, says he loves Stephon Diggs. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a complete dig at him. And we said it, I think, in week one, how Diggs on the team was detrimental a little bit to the team. And having him off, everybody eats, and it's doing so much better for their offense. Their offense looks way better. Honestly, the we've... Both Davis and Stevie, well, Davis kind of mocked the everybody eats last, last week. <laughs> but look what we've seen. Yeah. It's actually happening. And I think it's a huge part of Diggs not being there. And yeah, Josh did, you said it, he walked it back the next day. Yep. But Stevie, how is that not a, how is that not a, pardon the cheesy pun here, but how is that not a dig at Stefan Diggs? Um, yes and no. You know, yes, because it's obvious, you know, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was when you have an alpha male, you know, it's just the nat nature of the beast. You know, you have another alpha male that's, you know, hungry for the ball, that the world is saying, get the ball to him. Everybody know you get the ball to him. And, and that's just the nature of it. You know, um, now you have a team that you don't have an extra alpha male on the, on the offensive side um, in a receiver position. So, yeah, it's natural to say that you don't have that that one um, area where you have to go to and coaches are um, kind of pressured to tell you to go that way. Now you have free reign to go anywhere. So it is. I wouldn't say it's a shot at him, but it's just a reference considering Diggs was on our team for the past four years and what he's done. So it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just it's just a natural conversation, natural um, response from Josh. I don't think anybody who's watched the Buffalo Bills over the last four plus years would diminish what Stephon Diggs accomplished as a Buffalo Bill. I don't think that's part of this conversation, but I think everybody would agree who's watched this team. There seems to be a much better vibe check There's and i know a looseness There's a, a looseness, looseness to it. and yeah. i know that's a superfluous term that it's really very difficult to interpret what it actually means the analytics nerds are gonna be well, you can't quantify that exactly <laughs> but i think what we've seen through three weeks with the bills is that they have shown an ability to turn it up when they need to you saw a 74 percent pass rate in the first half against jacksonville they torched jacksonville they had no chance in hell of slowing down the passing attack and then as we saw as we've seen in the first two weeks at times it was James Cook who was doing his thing. Joe Brady, masterclass. In my mind, we talk about MVP award. Joe Brady is the assistant coach of the year to this point. 
And I don't think that's hyperbolic Move at all. Move over, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson, get out of here. Last year was Jim Schwartz. The year prior was D'Amico Ryans. This year, it's Joe Brady's to lose because he is doing great things with this Bills offense. I think you even saw that in the latter part of the season last year when Joe Brady took over. James Cook started running the ball more. Diggs got a little less of the ball. You kind of saw that switch a little at the end of last season, and then you can fully see it in the f- first Honestly, games. you're bang on. Like, the identity changed. The yeah. team's identity changed. And they are better off for it because one less is required of Josh. But when you need him to exactly. go Superman, as you saw, he can still he do that. Superman. Second half against Arizona, first half against Jacksonville. This guy needs to turn it on. He's like, sure, no problem. Oh, Shakir, first I'll hit you for quarter. 30 yards. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dominant. Not, not to pat ourselves on the back from last week, but we did say this was going to be the Josh Allen game. We all said this is the game where he breaks out. And sure enough, he was. But now people in the comments might be saying, and they definitely did in the comments last time, how dare you say that on third and seven, he is going to go to Dalton Kincaid and not Shakir. <laughs> I will preface it with Davis asked the question of if you're up against a lot of man defense, Shakir is a zone buster. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Stevie, the people in the comments just absolutely gave it to us when it came to that taking Kincaid over Shakir. Although... Both did to have a great game. Hey, look, first off, I love that they're engaged and I love that they have their opinions. So keep the comments going and, and continue to tell us what you think. Um, but if you if you say Shakir, hey, cool, we'll say Shakir too. Our thoughts was Dalton Kincaid. I also had Matt Collins in there. Um, and it's proven with the everybody eat mantra that it doesn't matter who who it is. It's, anybody can get open on third and six or seven. It might be a running back. So um, I'm cool with, with any one of those suggestions from the mafia, from the comments. Um, from from the, the entire league. Everybody's eating, and I'm happy with it. Buffet. A buffet of stats for the Buffalo Bills. With a, with a new person seemingly each week, right? We've seen the Keon Coleman game. We've seen the James Cook game. We saw the Khalil Shakir game. We've seen the Josh Allen game as well. I think at some point in time, you'll see Curtis Samuel break out for yeah. a huge performance or Marquez valdez Scanley, who ran a bunch of routes last week with Keon Coleman sitting in the first half. It's a really exciting proposition because seemingly week in and week out, I mean, you know, it's a fantasy football player's nightmare, yes. oh, but yeah. it's a Bills fan's <laughs> dream. Well, I, and you know that that MVS deep ball is coming at some point. Oh, yeah. Josh is going to connect, and that's going to be, like, that That just is a, his arm married to MVS's speed. He's got to so, catch it, though. That's a big problem. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's not full Kadarius Tony, but he had the Tony <laughs> yeah. influence from their time together in Kansas City. So, okay, let's let's try to, let's wrap up this Ravens game, but first let's dig into MVP. Allen is now the co-favorite with Mahomes. Where do you guys stand on that? I already have my Josh Allen MVP bet from the beginning of the season. Get that CLV. Yeah. But nice. right now, he's the favorite. Does he deserve to be? And is that where your money would go? I don't think Mahomes has even looked that special so far through Four three games. Not good. Yeah, Sloppy. as opposed to Josh Allen, zero interceptions, yep. two rushing touchdowns, blowing out opponents. I think it's... And to, you gave me the stat before we, we were just chatting off air of the Allen record when he doesn't turn the ball over is insane. Yeah. Like... I, I guess with MVP, you're trying to project ahead, right? So do I think Sam Darnold is going to win MVP? No. I think you can make an argument through three weeks that Sam Darnold would be the NFL MVP. I think you could probably make the same Saquon argument too. for Saquon yeah. Barkley. Exactly. Philadelphia, Jalen Hurts has been a detriment to the Eagles offense. It's Saquon who was carrying them, and they're 2-1. and one. But I think that Josh Allen should definitely be the MVP favorite. I am a little bit concerned about Kansas City in that Travis Kelsey – spent the summer gallivanting across the globe and going to parties and whatever he was doing with Taylor Swift does not look like himself. And we know Hollywood Brown's not coming back. We know Isaiah Pacheco's out a long time with that knee knee problem. So the offense, yeah, Rasheed Rice is unbelievable. And I think Xavier Worthy is going to be good. But statistically, I'm a little bit concerned about what Mahomes is going to be able to do. Now, you still have a bevy of great candidates. Lamar Jackson, 18-1, to might be something I would look at, especially if you think the Ravens can beat the Bills. But Allen, in my mind, guys, I, I'm totally with you, should be the clear-cut MVP favorite through three weeks. So are you are you laying the two and a half with Baltimore Sunday then, or what do we? Uh, no, I, I like the Bills, and I don't like what I've seen from Baltimore. Also, a banged-up offensive line, too. That, we talked about it last week. The well, offensive line's a mess. Banged up, and they are still figuring things out when it comes to their defense. Mike yeah. McDonald moving on to Seattle. They have not settled into that same type of Ravens defensive force that we've seen for years. And the way that... The Raiders came back on in the, in the second half. The way the Cowboys came back on yeah. them in the second half. That is very Ravens, though. That's been it the Ravens is. for the last three years. Yeah. The Harbaugh, that, that's quarter. the MO. Yeah. That's yeah. the MO. That's the MO. But after what we've seen from Buffalo so far through three weeks, he had a 3 0 start, 112 points, uh, the second most in franchise history. This team averaging 
well over 30 a game, I still like Buffalo in the points. And you know what I love too? And this goes back, I think they haven't lost a game by six or more, and I think it's got to be 45 yeah. or 46 games right now. Preposterous stat. And I I know that the, the degenerate, the, the hardcore gamblers will mock me for this. Tease that up to eight and a half. Mm. Tease that up with the over. You're getting close to even money. That is that that is my that that well I'm not that's what I will be doing. Yes. I may have already done it, but that is that's what's <laughs> happening. Obviously, I just let you know where my money is, but this is still gonna be a tight game. Stevie, let's bring you back in here. What's the most important matchup when you're looking at this game Sunday night? Uh good question, Chris. I'll say I'll say the most important matchup is gonna be our defensive line and our linebackers. Um, I feel like our DBs, they're solid. I think they've been playing solid. Uh Taylor Rapp and DeMar has been doing their thing in that backfield. Um, holding down the, the the holding stopping the passes from the op- opposing teams. Um, but I feel like going up against a Baltimore Ravens team who's known for running the ball, having a two time MVP who's elite on the ground. I think our linebackers and our D line have to shut that down in order for this game to be a cakewalk for the Buffalo Bills. Do we fear the Ravens' running game? Or I know Derrick Henry's numbers are good now on the year, but. That's just a lot of stat padding against a Cowboys team that everybody is running the ball against. That's true. And the, through the first two games, he did not look very good. He looked awesome last week, for sure. I'll give you that. He looked awesome. But I don't know. I, I'm more worried about Lamar destroying the Bills on the ground than Derrick Henry. I think the two almost work hand in hand, right? Where if Lamar is running all over you, all of a sudden you're selling out to stop him and Derrick Henry is facing a box that is less intense than he would otherwise. So I think the two are kind of intertwined. I'm with you. Do I fear Derrick Henry in 2024 like I did five years ago? I don't. But still, that Ravens running game, and I know it was against Dallas, but that was ridiculous what they were doing against the Cowboys. I think the Buffalo Bills are much more equipped to handle it than the Dallas Cowboys were. Yeah, do I fear it? Mm, But historically, the Bills have struggled against mobile quarterbacks. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I think the Bills win, but... I don't know. But we saw it week one. Kyler Murray. Yeah, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray kind of ran all over him too. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree completely with Takiya. I am really scared about Lamar running, like running the ball. But Derrick Henry, even though the Bills are a smaller defense, Derrick Henry doesn't really scare me. He is a big boy. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to get is. stiff armed. <laughs> is there anything worse than getting stiff armed by Derrick Henry? Well, didn't just that, how stupid you look. Was it that was Josh Norman yeah. in that famous Oof. against the Bills on I think a Thursday night? But. That for the record, that play didn't count. I believe it was an illegal shit by the offense, but everybody just remembers the stiff arm. Oh, and, that's and all and the replay of that. That's all that counts. Everyone will remember the streeter same game parlay, Chris. Wow, that, what that, a- you, <laughs> that you taped on the street just outside Tell of Tell me you are a radio professional with many years of experience who Not talks almost years. three to four hours a day. It's four hours. Four hours a day. Like what what a segue. And and now the pressure's on, because let's see if it's as memorable as you said it was. Oh, oh no. one more fans. There we go. So we're talking Bills Ravens Sunday night. How well do you know football? Zero. Zero? Zero percent. I have no idea what any of this is. Well, you made a nice catch. Hey, man, heads up. You want it? You want it? Oh, 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 what a catch. We're on the streets of Toronto doing a little streeter same game parlay for Bills Ravens. We've had some tough luck getting people lately, so I brought a little football to help. Hey, bro, heads up. That's you. That's you. Nice catch. You a football fan? You a football fan at all? A little bit. Not okay. Much. We are going to make a little same game parlay with FanDuel. You look a lot like Matthew Shinetti, but like the evil version of him. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. It's my highest compliment. What, let's start with the game. Who do you like? The Bills or the Ravens? I mean, more like the Ravens, but I feel like Josh Allen is good this year, you know? Josh Allen's a beast. He's probably yeah, yeah. the MVP right now. Okay, so you're taking the Bills or the Ravens? Bills. Let's go with the Bills. Go. Yeah, the rushing is under. Okay, so let's go. Yeah. You're going under on the rushing. Okay. So then if he's going, if he's going under on the rushing, you like him over on the passing? Yeah, for sure. How you feeling? Is that a winner? That's a, that's a winner. That's I love winner, it. Yeah. I don't want to throw over into the road. This way, this way. Okay, okay. how well do you know football? Not at all. We are going to make a little same game parlay with okay. FanDuel. So we got the Bills and the Ravens. Who do you like in the game? Bills. Josh Allen. I don't know how well you know the Bills or Josh Allen. My He's... boyfriend's a Bills fan. So... Okay, so there we go. So you are, you are ready to go here. Yeah. So Josh Allen, probably the MVP. Maybe, like, I, your boyfriend has obviously made a great choice of a team with the Bills. Yeah. Josh Allen, you like his passing yards over, 236 and a half. Over? Sure. Okay. Now, I think, let's, you want to just put his rushing yards on there, too? Sure. And let's just make this a full Josh Allen anytime touchdown? Yes. Guys, try to You got a second? Sure. You want to talk some football? Uh, I, I would, but I don't know anything about it. Okay, don't worry about it. Keep riding. Love the tricycle. Oh. 
Why are you throwing short? I got Bills. How come you got the Bills? I don't know. They're undefeated this season. Okay, now, is there anything on this board you see that you like? I like Derrick Henry touchdown. There's a lot of good options. Josh really? Allen passing yards, Lamar Jackson rush. Looking at. You're looking at Josh Allen passing, eh? I think jo Josh Allen over 236 and Okay, around. now the fine people of FanDuel have a great market of Josh Allen pass and rush, 274 and a half. I think you doubled down with that. All right, why not? Go make this one on FanDuel. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Beyond the Bills and the Ravens, guys, I think perhaps the most intriguing matchup this weekend involves Kansas City and the Chargers, a team that started 2-0. They do have a lot of injuries on the offensive line. A couple of guys will be missing on defense as well, and the questions around Justin Herbert. But perhaps the biggest question, not only in football, but around the world of sure. pop culture, what's the deal with Travis Kelsey? Eight catches, 69 yards, zero touchdowns through three weeks. Should we be concerned about the production of Kelsey going forward, and perhaps if he's lost a step. Uh, I think I heard Todd McShay talk about this with Ryan Rosillo. Todd McShay was like, "Do we can we stop apologizing for him in terms of he doesn't look like he's, and he's he even said he's like, he'll play himself into shape, but he doesn't look like he's his normal self. I don't necessarily think that anyone or any, like his busy off seasons to blame. I think the Chiefs sort of showed us this formula last year. They didn't need him in the regular season. You can keep him on ice in the regular season. When the playoffs come, he was still same old Travis Kelsey. You are right. He almost had a thousand yards last year. Yeah, it's not like he had. He, it's not like yes. he had four hundred receiving yards. He still was almost a thousand yard receiver. And I, I'm seeing you mentioned excuses. Mahomes and Andy Reid. Well, defenses are covering Travis Kelsey. Oh, in the past, defenses weren't yeah. covering <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Like I thought that whole explanation was absurd. Travis Kelsey at least to this point, isn't the same player he once was. Now, we've seen this playbook with New England and Gronkowski in the yeah. past. They put him on ice. They put him on that. You put the uh, the expensive car in the garage and you crack it out in the beautiful, beautiful summer day, also known as the playoffs. But, <laughs> but with the Chiefs and all their injuries, I don't know, man. I think they might need to put that car out of the garage sooner than they might have hoped. Well, I think you you kind of touched on this last week when you had him as your best bet. Yeah. Sorry about you that. You had to bring that one up, But eh? he's still, and you gave the stat that made sense as to why, he's still running routes at the, the top end, tight end rates. So it's not like they're not trying to get him involved, but it's the ball's just not going to him. Well, yeah, and he's dropping the ball too. So, and, and he's the ball's not going to him. They have Worthy, they have Rice. But Rice looks again, awesome. Rice he looks, looks really amazing. Good. Uh, but to both of your points, I was wondering, maybe are they preserving him for the playoffs, Stevie? Are you worried about Travis Kelsey at all? Kelsey's proven. He's proven himself throughout the year, throughout many seasons. Again, he's a champion, so champions kind of get that leeway to kind of coast through in a sense. Um, so I'm going to say it's it's fine. Kelsey's all the way good. Okay, so when looking at the scope of things and this Chiefs team, are they the best in the AFC or is that the Bills? Ah, Takiya, that's, that's a good one. But... Uh, as much as I want to say the Buffalo Bills, I'm going to have to give that to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Until we beat the best, then we'll be the best. Right now, we're looking good, and so are they. So I can't I can't say that we're going to take that title um, until we beat the Kansas City Chiefs, but uh, I see where you're going with it. Unfortunately for me, it's like Stevie's right. Yes, the Bills, the Bills could go 17-0, 35 points a game, look like the best team in the NFL, but until they beat the Chiefs in a playoff game, none of it matters. You're absolutely right. It's it's an indisputable fact. And until you cross that threshold, you'll still be looking at the Chiefs as the big dogs in the AFC, the big dogs in the NFL. And they've earned that, right? It's not something they haven't earned, but it's on the Bills now to earn it themselves. Well, we were just talking a bit about the Chiefs and how Mahomes isn't looking that good and how their offense, yeah, rice and worthy, but Travis Kelsey not doing much. Defense doesn't look that not great. Not as dominant. They're okay, right. but not as dominant for sure. So I don't know. I think that the Bills, listen, coming into this season, strength of schedule was such a, a big thing and it was supposed to be a really tough schedule right from the beginning and they're 3-0. and And then people will say, oh, these are bad teams, but are they bad yeah, did teams? That, what, did that change in 21 yeah, days? They, they weren't bad teams at the beginning of the season. Jaguars were supposed to give them a tough time. And Miami was a favorite in that matchup. Arizona and actually looks better. That Arizona was supposed sure. to be one of the easy ones. And they look the yeah, best of those three teams. Exactly. So I don't know. I think the Bills are looking pretty good. And honestly, to, to your point about the Chiefs offense being down, other than... 
Buffalo and I'd say Minnesota and New Orleans, although New Orleans offense looked terrible last week against Philly, offenses around the league are really down. So, Stevie, what are what are we attributing that to? Why are offenses down around the NFL? I'm going to say teams are starting slow because competition is getting better. That's what I'm going to I'm going to charge it to. I'm going to charge it to the defenses getting better, being more acclimated. Um, the offensive style we've seen a new shift in in, in play style, and now the defense is catching up. So it was kind of it kind of reminds me of when the Wildcat came in and, and it took the league by storm. The defenses didn't know what to do, and then like a couple years later. You know, they began to neutralize it. So I think that's just what's happening right now with the air attack. <laughs> the way Skylar Thompson looked last week for Miami, maybe the Dolphins should bring the wild card back this week. The Wildcat needs to come back. Tyreek Hill and Waddle. Just call both in. Ronnie Brown. What yeah. could he possibly be up to right now? He's ready to go. All right, Stevie. Last week, you had the Bills Corners as your villain of the week. A fantastic what a, what a great pick. Great call. Pick. I mean, they shone against Jacksonville this week. What are you eyeing? All right, this week, my villain of the week is going to go to Jaden Daniels. The kid is amazing. He's one of the only guys since Steve Young and Lamar Jackson to put up numbers with his arm and his legs. So, I mean, this kid is just dangerous, and he's only getting better as the weeks go. He took that first loss in week one, but as you see, his numbers has just been rising, 185, 225, 256, two touchdowns. Uh, the kid from Fontana, California, is coming to destroy and wreck the day in Arizona. Oh, another thing, he used to go to Arizona State, so this is kind of a comeback game for him. So I'm looking forward to seeing Jaden Daniels go up against the Arizona Cardinals. Stevie, what's it like when, you know, you've got, been a guy who's played your career and then you go back to one of those college places? What's it like with a homecoming like that? Indeed, indeed. One, what The main thing is because of the fans that you have back there that they seen you grow from the high school star to the college stud, and now you go to the NFL and you get to come back. It's something that's special, you know, um, something that every player lives to play uh, to play in that situation. Um, so I just think Jaden is going to take advantage of this, especially going up against Kyler Murray, who was also um, a Heisman, a former Heisman. So I just think he's going to come in and wreck the day and, and do his part. That's just an amazing quarterback matchup. I cannot wait. And I, I agree with you. I, I got my Jaden Daniels rookie of the year bet in before the season started, but like, I don't know. He's, uh, he, he looks awesome, man. He he's, does. And he's so fun. Like, it's just, it's it's an excitement to watching him that the the position has sort of been lacking across the league this year. Here would be my concern with backing Jaden Daniels on FanDuel is that the guy runs the ball a lot and he weighs a little bit more than I do. Probably not a recipe for long-term viability and staying on the field. Frankly, I think there could be some value backing Caleb Williams at plus 700 on FanDuel. I mean, yes, a tough start for the Bears, but the numbers could be picking up. You get Keenan Allen back in there. The weapons are, like, they're loaded. But can they Chicago. play on the offensive can, line? Can they no. protect him? Keenan no, no. Allen cannot protect no, no. him. No, no, but I think ultimately, let's say Jaden Daniels, and I'm not hoping this happens, but let's say he does get hurt because the way he plays, I, mean, I almost feel it's an inevitability. Who's next beyond that? I think, Caleb, I think Caleb's got a chance. Could be a little bit of a buy low there. My, Marvin Harrison Jr. is pretty interesting. and well, Neighbors? Neighbors, neighbors is we're taping this on a Thursday. Neighbors is playing tonight, but he has honestly. If they weren't playing tonight, we would have probably spent a lot of time talking about neighbors just I love because neighbors. that guy's been unreal. Another and, LSU kid, yeah. So wide receiver factory at LSU. Uh, but honestly, I think the difference will be with rookie of the year. If Washington can make the playoffs, which I think they can, then you have to give it to Daniels. If he if he plays thirteen games in their playoff team, he has to be the rookie of the year. Yeah, that's that's hard to dispute, and uh, you consider. Romo Dunze, also in Chicago. He had a huge game in week three, well over 100 yards and a touchdown. Maybe he's a guy with Caleb who could really take a step here as the season progresses. I hated that pick. When that happened, we, we did a live stream for with TSN's YouTube. I hated that. Sorry, not a live stream. We did reaction videos. I couldn't stand that pick. You have Byron Murphy on the board. You have like offensive linemen you could grab. Offensive Why linemen. Why are you wasting yeah. that on a luxury pick and well, receiver? If you want to talk about the Bears and poor decision making, let's talk about DeAndre Swift and the $24 yeah, million yeah. Dollars they gave to him, where he runs for two yards a carry and is completely inept and has already been usurped by Roshan Johnson yeah. and Khalil Herbert. He might be on the bench before long. So. That is where I would take umbrage with the Bears and their decision making more so than a Dunsey. Well, while we're patting ourselves on the back for bets we've made that haven't cashed yeah. yet, we might as well bring up the leaderboard here because on our on our staff parlay, so far I've been carrying my weight. I'm two and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. AK, you're one you're and one, one, and one and one. Dude, Travis Kelsey screwed me over. What do you want? Takia, you're zero oh and one. Davis was Davis was one and zero. Oh. Davis hit with with Christian Kirk last week. 
But we got to give props to Stevie. Huge. Stevie, with, with the Saquon <laughs> Barkley pick, this guy had Saquon Barkley to score two touchdowns. Which I don't, the odds were ridiculous. No, I and, thought he was a crazy person. And I and but you know what? He lived off that experience from the drop he mentioned in the Pittsburgh game. And Barkley bounced back, had his two touchdowns. Stevie, come get your flowers. Thank you, thank you, brother. Hey, I just felt it, man. I just I just know when it when a guy is needed on the team and then you have a bad one, everybody in the organization is there to uplift. And I had a guy in Lee Evans who was there to help me, and I felt like uh, Saquon Barkley has his whole team and coaching staff that that was there to support him, and he did what he was supposed to. Stevie was bold last week with his Barkley two touchdowns. He's playing it real safe this week. Stevie, you got the Niners over the Pats. Why are you on that? Indeed, I got the 49ers over the Pats. Um, last last week, I believe two weeks ago, I chose the Niners over Minnesota Vikings, and they didn't deliver. I feel like their back is against the wall, losing to the Vikings in the NFC, and now they're coming against the New England Patriots, who I, I just feel like is going to be a e it should be an easy game for the San Francisco 49ers. So I'm going to give use that as my safe pick. See, I would chirp Stevie for taking a minus 500, but he did take Saquon to score twice and it cashed. So I just have to give him his props. So for my leg on this, I am going to play off of Stevie last week. And I'm going to take one Barkley, not two touchdowns, <laughs> just one oh, touchdown. Take three <laughs> touchdowns. He's got five on the year. It's it's clear the tush push. I don't know if it's gone, but it's nowhere near as effective. They had a fourth and one, and they they kind of ran like a like a jet sweep last week. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, but they're playing a Bucks team that is allowing two rushing touchdowns per game, which is second worst in the NFL. Barkley's just going to eat against that defense. For me, another guy I think is going to eat this weekend is Tony Pollard. Um, this is a great matchup against a Miami team that has no quarterback. Again, we talked about it. They might bring back Ronnie Brown to run the Wildcat. I think this is a low-scoring game. It's a grinded-out game, and it's all about game script for Tony Pollard. In games in which Tennessee was leading, 17 carries, 16 carries. If he gets that kind of volume, even close to it, he'll blow past 50 and a half rushing. That's my play. All right, my play, I'm sticking with, I'm going with Stevie here with the 49ers play. I'm going Jordan Mason. I can't see him going another game without a touchdown. He's averaging the most carries in the league right now. So I think he finds the end zone. And Fan will be happy. That's This is now an SGP plus, Ooh, not just, not just a parlay. Talking. This is an SGP plus and... If you agree, then yeah, go to FanDuel and maybe make that. It's pretty nice value, even with the minus 500 on there. But all I know is based off of past, my leg will hit. And I like that we have a little standings board now for yeah. me to just take and, a victory lap. And we give Stevie like the one point if he cashes the minus 500. Well, but That's I think how it's going to work. Because he's got, if he keeps going okay. week to week with Barkley, like big, big plays like that, like Barkley, then... That's fair. All right, Stevie, we know you got to jump on the bird. So thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate the time from the airport. One love, family. See you guys later. One love. I love it. That's how we got to end every single episode of Broken Table. One love, Chris. One love to Kia. I'm Aaron Karolnik. We'll be back next week.